Hello and welcome to the non OBD submission training video. As you will see on the screen here, I am logged into the tester account. You will notice this as the far left bubble will say test result details. This is how you will know that you are in your tester account. So in order to upload and submit a non OBD clean truck check emissions test, we will move to the far right and click on the forms button. And here in this page, you will see online forms, forms in progress and forms submitted. In order to start a new form, we will click the opacity slash visual inspection information button. And yes, this is a button. This will open a new form for you, and here we will enter vehicle information and submit the test results themselves. The VINs will be checked and decoded for accuracy. If the VIN is incorrect or is not subject to a non-OBD test but should be submitting an OBD test, the VIN will be rejected at this stage. So for now, I will type in the VIN of the vehicle. and hit the button that says confirm. Once confirmed, I will hit save and continue. And do not click again while the page is loading. That will potentially crash the page, so please be patient. On step two of the form, you will see your tester information, your phone number, and your email address. That is automatically generated based on your account information. And below that, we will now enter the vehicle information. Once you've entered the vehicle information, you will now enter the additional vehicle information, including the test date. You will note that the fuel type should be auto detected based on the VIN number. If it cannot be auto detected, this will become a drop down menu and you will need to select the appropriate fuel type for the vehicle that you've tested. I'll enter the odometer reading and the engine family name. manufacturer and the engine model. And finally, the engine model year. Now, this is an alternative fuel vehicle. And below that, we'll fill in the same information that has been required on the PDF forms that have been submitted prior to the system taking in these test results. So the ECL condition, is clean and readable, faded, not readable, or missing. It's important to note that you will need to fill in any field with a red asterisk. Once these have been filled in, you will note two additional text boxes here where you can fill in additional notes. So if the vehicle has a retrofit DPF, you will need to enter the VDEX information here in this box. And for any items above that you've clicked needs repair, you will need to add additional notes and explain the situation here in this box. Once you've done so, you may click next. This will take you to step three, which because this is an alternative fuel vehicle is not required. So we will click next again. 
I will cover that in the next portion of this video for the diesel vehicles. Again, same information here, not required. Let me skip. And here in step five, I will need to click this checkbox to sign as the submitter of this form and of this test. And I am attesting that to the best of my knowledge, all the information is true, correct, and complete. So again, it is important that you fill out the information of your test result and of the vehicle appropriately as you are attesting that this is accurate information. If you'd like to preview your summary before you submit it, you can do so with this button here. And I am going to go ahead and submit the form and the test have not been submitted until this is processed. So you'll receive this note here that says it is being reviewed and processed. I may close this page. From here, I will click forms as we are submitting a new test. I will go back to the opacity visual inspection information button to start a new form. And this will have a new VIN. Just one moment. So again, this VIN will be checked against the database for its fuel type and if it is appropriate to submit a non-OBD test based on the vehicle information. So we're going to click Confirm. Save and continue. Step two, my tester information will be here. Below that will be the vehicle information. So the owner's name, contact information here. Scroll down to the vehicle information and the test date. Fill out all the required boxes with a that have a red asterisk here. And now I can move down to the emissions control information. Again, this is the same information that was required on the forms that were being submitted via email. So my ECL condition here, clean and readable, faded or missing. Again, all fields with a red asterisk must be filled out in order to move forward. Below this, you will see two additional boxes. If the vehicle has a retrofit DPF, you will need to enter the VDEX information in this box. If any of the ECL conditions or emissions uh, control systems are marked as need repair, you will need to explain why and in additional information here in this box. To move forward, click Next. And now we will get into the opacity results. So this will come from your J1667 device. So my last calibration date was in February. The brands are listed here on the drop down, so make sure you click from the drop down. And here I will enter my three test results here. Test result one. And once filled in, go ahead and click next. In step four, this is where we need to upload the receipt from the uh, J1667 meter. So this word here missing is a link. We're going to click on this 
it will open your pop-up. If you have any issues with this, it may be blocked by your browser, so disable um, any pop-up blockers you have. Um, additionally, you can try to use a private browser window through your browser, whether it's Chrome, Edge, whatever it may be. Go ahead and open up a, um, a private or incognito window and try again. So once we're here, we will click Browse. Now this will open to your hard drive on your computer. You're just going to select the right file. Once you do so, you click Open. That will attach the file here. This means that it is about to be attached. It has not actually been attached, so we need to click Upload. You will see the status has changed to Uploaded. This does not mean your form has been submitted or that you are done. We need to continue on. We are only on step four of six. So below this, you will now see the uploaded documents. Essentially, this is telling you what will be uploaded and submitted. This has been added to the form, but we still need to submit the form. If for any reason we've made a mistake with the wrong document or anything we need to change, you may edit or delete and then you would re-upload back above. Being that my file is correct, I am going to click Next. Here in step five, I may click the checkbox, which will fill in my name as a signature. And this is my signature attesting that to the best of my knowledge, all information is true, correct, and complete. Again, as the credential tester, we are attesting that we are submitting accurate and truthful information. If we wish to preview, preview our submission before we do so, we may click on this button. I am going to go ahead and hit submit, and that will begin processing the form. Now that we've submitted our form, the system will be reviewing and processing. Processing may take a few moments, so we're going to close this window and that will take us back to our home page. Now that you have submitted your non-OBD test results to the CTC Viz system, we will now go in and check on those results. So by clicking the clean truck check icon in the account, it will take you back to your main page. And after that, you will click on the test results detail page. This will take you to your entire test results table. <clears throat> It's important to know that this table functions like Excel. If you click on a column in the blue area, it will sort the column alphabetically and the rest of the table will follow that order. So for example, with test ID, I'm gonna click it once and you'll see an arrow that points up. That means that it is sorted A to Z, smallest to largest. So. My smallest test ID is 31. That is now at the top. If I click this blue area one more time, it will be the opposite. My largest test number is 1039, and you'll note that the arrow has now pointed down. So that is one way to quickly sort largest to smallest or alphabetically. If you are looking for a specific item in any of these tables, click on the funnel, and you can choose the drop down to say, is it exactly equal to something? Is it not equal to something? Does it start with, contain, ends with, whatever you may be looking for. So for example, let's say that I wanna look for a test ID that is um, uh, 36, All right? If I hit filter, the table will show me only test ID 36. So that is how you can sort. And again, you can do that by VIN, same thing here. You can do it by license plate, same thing here. <clears throat> you can even do it by date. So for any reason that you're wanting to search by date, you can do that. And with date specifically, it has equal to, um, equal or after, equal or before is before. So you can work on date ranges here as well. Um, and if I clear this filter, it will take me back to all of my results, right? So the clear filter is very important if you're working through your tables. Now, to look for a test result in specific and the details, you'll note that when I hover over these, the 
cursor will, ch will change. You can note that this is not clickable because it does not turn into a hand, but the first column is clickable. So if I click on the first column, which is the test ID number, <clears throat> what I will get is the, ex the expanded version of the de test results and details. It'll have everything here in the system as far as the VIN, the tester, the owner, the date, uh, model year, fuel type, pass fail results here, uh, visual inspection data for the ECL and everything here as well. And um, as I go down, again, it'll have another test result here, pass fail, and then it'll have the smoke opacity results if this test had opacity requirements. If it was an alternative fuel and it was visual inspection only, it will not show that. If for any reason you want to print this entire detail page, you can just right click on your mouse. It'll bring up this and it may look slightly different in your computer, but look for the print option. Click print. <clears throat> it will give you a preview of what you're going to print. Make sure you know where you're printing it to. There is an option of saving it as a file if you also wish to do that. Saving it as PDF, it will save in your computer as a PDF. Uh, and it'll ask you to save the name or you can print it to just general printer. You hit print and you go grab that for any purposes that you may have. <clears throat> and I'm going to go back. I'm going to show you the shorter version of this that you may want for your customers. Again, note that all test results will show in the customer's account with their vehicle account. After June 6th, it will show both non OBD and OBD test results. But if you want to print something for the client, you can. So here in the test result field, you click on the word pass or fail, and it will give you a much shorter uh, result. It'll give you the test type, the date, the ID, the VIN, license plate, and then the result. This is a passing test. So the uh, note is that congratulations, you've passed the clean truck check inspection. Again, we will right click. Go to print. It will give you a print option. You can print this from your printer as long as it's connected to your computer. Or again, you can save it as a PDF. It'll save to your computer. You choose the name of the file and you will have it on your computer. You could email that to your clients if you wanted to, either whichever you prefer. If you want to save the paper, you can do the PDF. Either way, you now have options to print your results directly from your test results page. So that will conclude this video and I hope you all have a great rest of your day.